it's Katie and welcome back to my booktube channel. Today's video is my April wrap up so I will be telling you guys about all the books that I read this month and I'll give you guys a little summary and then some of my thoughts and I ended up reading 17 books this month, which is still a lot. I don't know how I read that many, but it's been on par for what I've done the last few months. And I think it's because reading is probably like my only hobby right now. I feel like I just work and then I come home and read and that's really all I do. So I read a ton of books, but I've read like over 6,000 pages again this month, which is amazing. And I also have full reviews for all of these books on my Goodreads, which is linked below. So if you want to hear more of my thoughts than what I say in this video, feel free to check that out. Before I get into the books that I read this month, I wanted to tell you guys that I revamped my rating system because usually my ratings are just kind of a feeling. I'm like, I really love this, so it's a five star. Or this one was kind of average, so it's three stars. That's usually like what I was doing. But I decided to sit down and actually think about what could make a book a three star versus a four star, four star versus five star, that kind of thing. So for me, my system now is if I give a book one star, those are books that I kind of want to forget that they exist. And I just don't want to think about the fact that I spent time reading them. I don't think I've ever given a book one star, maybe one book, I'm not sure, but that's very hard to do. Um, two stars for me are books that I didn't really enjoy. There's something I really didn't like about it, but it's not really the worst book. It's just not one I would ever recommend to anybody. If I give a book three stars, those are ones that are pretty average, but I managed to enjoy them and I would recommend them to certain people if I think it's something they would enjoy, but it's not something I would recommend to everyone. Four star books are ones that I really enjoyed. I loved them and I will definitely recommend them to everyone, but they're not something I plan on ever rereading. And then if I give a book five stars, those are books that I'm absolutely obsessed with. I loved everything about them. I will recommend them to everybody, even if they don't read, I will recommend it to everybody and probably talk about them way more than anybody wants me to. And they're ones I look up fan art for, like everything. Those are the ones I'm absolutely obsessed with. So I tried to make it harder to give five stars because I realized that I was giving five stars out really easily. And so I wanted to kind of revamp it. So that's my new system. And now we will actually move on to the books that I read this month. The first two books I read were Siege and Storm and Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo, which are books two and three in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. And I wanted to binge as much of the Grishaverse as possible before the Shadow and Bone TV series came out on Netflix a week ago. And I am so glad that I did read a lot of the Grishaverse. It was nice to have background knowledge before going into the show but I'm not really gonna summarize these because they are sequels, so it would spoil stuff from Shadow and Bone, which I've also talked about before in some of my videos, but I really did enjoy them. I gave them both four stars. Siege and Storm to me, it didn't really have too much plot, but the characters kind of won me over. I loved Nikolai. He's probably my favorite character from the whole trilogy, and I loved any scene with him in it. And then I also really enjoyed the twins. And so it was nice to see some characters that I really, really started to care about. And I kind of gravitated toward those characters. Also, I feel like Alina had a lot of character development and I really liked exploring her connection with the Darkling in this one. And then for Ruin and Rising, this one had me more invested emotionally than the other books in the series, I think. I didn't realize how much I cared about certain characters until certain scenes in this book. And so that kind of surprised me. I really enjoyed the pacing and the action in this book and I also was not too sure how I felt about the ending. I'm still kind of unsure but there's a lot of moments in this book that kind of wrecked me and kind of played with my emotions so I definitely did enjoy these. The next book is actually the only audiobook I listened to this month, and that is Meet Cute by Helena Hunting. And in this book, it follows Kaylin, who ends up going to college for law, and on her first day, she ends up bumping into this guy, and he ends up being an actor who's from one of her favorite TV shows growing up. And they end up in a lot of the same classes because he is also trying to be a lawyer, and 
They end up kind of being rivals and friends in their classes until the end of college where he ends up screwing her over and she's held a grudge ever since. But one day he walks into her office and needs her help and so she kind of feels for him because he has now be he has now become the legal guardian of his younger sister. And so they kind of start to bond over that and she's helping him with this and kind of trying to work through their past issues in order to do what's right for his sister. I absolutely loved this book. It made me laugh, it made me cry, it made me blush, like it was so good, it was so emotional. So like the cover and the premise seems really fun and light and fluffy and you do have a lot of those adorable moments in here as well, but it was way more emotional than I was anticipating and it I almost cried like so many times. I really felt for these characters. They both had things going on and just seeing them help each other heal and just seeing them interact. It was adorable. It was so sweet and heartfelt and I really loved their dynamic. I loved their, their dynamic with his little sister. It was just amazing and I feel like it's very underrated and I want people to read this book and talk about it more because I really fell in love with it. The next book I read was The Happy Ever After Playlist by Abby Jimenez. And I had actually read a sneak peek of this before picking up the full version and the sneak peek drew me in immediately. So this book follows Sloane who lost her fiance two years ago and she's still going through grief and trying to figure out how to go on with her life since then. And one day she's driving down the road and there's this dog in the middle of the street so she stops to help him and he jumps in her car and so she's trying to call the owner to be like, hey, pick up your dog. And she can't get a hold of him. So she's like, you know what, fine, it's my dog now. It's fine, I've accepted it. But it turns out the dog's owner is actually a musician who is, he has been on tour. And so he finally realizes his dog is missing, calls Sloan back, and he says, can you watch him while I'm on tour and I'll come back, we'll meet up and I'll take my dog back. And so they talk through text all the time while she's still taking care of the dog and it starts as like a long distance relationship. I have very different feelings toward this book depending on which half we're talking about. So I loved the first half of this. It was adorable. That's the part like the sneak peek was from. I fell in love with it. I loved the characters, loved the premise of it. It was absolutely adorable. There was a lot of chemistry between the main characters. You could definitely feel the sparks and I was very invested. But then the second half of the story it kind of took a turn and it ended up being something that I don't feel like I signed up for and I feel like the relationship ended up in a very toxic place that I didn't feel like I could root for them to be together. I just wanted them to stop being together and just work on themselves and figure it out because I just wasn't happy with their relationship or the things that they were doing. I also didn't realize it before, but this is actually the companion novel to The Friend Zone, which I read later on in the month. I don't know why I always read novels in like the wrong order when they're companion novels, but it happened to me twice this month. So we'll get to that in a little bit. But I ended up giving this two stars, which I felt horrible because I loved it so much in the beginning, but I just really didn't like the ending and I can't really see myself recommending this to people and that, that kind of sucks to say. I feel horrible whenever I don't enjoy a book, but two stars. After that, I read a couple ebooks that I got from NetGalley and the first one is 10 Truths in a Dare by Ashley Elston and this one actually comes out May 4th, so very soon. So this is actually the companion novel to 10 Blind Dates, which I read I think earlier this year and I loved it. It's super charming. I fell in love with the whole family and the Fab Four. And again, it's a companion novel, so you don't have to have read 10 Blind Dates before reading this, but I prefer to read it that way. And this one takes place in the same town, same family, and it follows Olivia, who's one of the members of the Fab Four we met in 10 Blind Dates. And she has always had like her whole life figured out. She's always very put together and she's about to graduate, but she ends up getting told that she won't be able to graduate unless she figures out a way to get her PE credit that she didn't fulfill. 
and she's supposed to be going to all these grad parties this week and her mom's able to track her phone. So she creates this plan that she will pass her phone off to the other members of the Fab Four and they'll pretend to be her at all of these graduation parties while she ends up going to volunteer at this golf tournament to fulfill her credits. And obviously there's some things that go down with that plan. <laughs> I really loved seeing the Fab Four and the family again. It was so great. I kind of wish we saw a little bit more of the family though because that was one of my favorite elements of 10 Blind Dates, but I still really loved the characters we did get to see and it still gives you those very similar vibes. It's a very fun, easy read and the characters are great. I feel like I was missing some of the charm from 10 Blind Dates, but I feel like if you just read the this one before reading 10 blind dates I think you would really really enjoy it it definitely feels like a spring vibe to me so if that's something you want to read I think it'd be perfect for the month of May and it's just very good I love Ashley Elfson's writing her characters are great and it was a very enjoyable read I ended up giving this one three stars after that, I ended up reading The Secret Garden by Mariah Marsden, and this doesn't come out until June. I think like June 25th? I can't remember, but the middle or end of June, and this is another one I got from NetGalley, and I'm honestly not too sure why I ended up picking this up. It's a graphic novel, and I love reading graphic novels, and The Secret Garden is a story I've always wanted to read because I feel like I always see it in bookstores, and I've heard about it for the longest time, but I've never picked it up. And this is actually a retelling of The Secret Garden, so I'm not sure how accurate the story is to the original story because, like I said, I've never read it. But I really did enjoy this graphic novel. It was a super quick read. I think I read it in like 15 or 20 minutes, so very quick. But I really enjoyed it because when you first start reading, it's very, like, dreary. Like, all the pictures are very very dreary and kind of gloomy and sad but it kind of fits the vibe of what's happening and then later on when you get to the garden part it's very colorful and vivid and I really think the contrast between the two was so well done it obviously was intentional and I think it was a great element to add to it so I really enjoyed that part I think I also ended up giving this one three stars after this point, I read six books in a row that I gave five stars, and I'm not really sure what happened, but they were just all amazing. And the first one is A Cuban Girl's Guide to Tea and Tomorrow by Laura Taylor Namey. And this is one that I was anticipating reading for a very long time, so when I finally saw it at the library, I knew I had to pick it up, and I'm so glad I did. This is one of my favorite books that I read this month and probably this year. So this follows Leela who has her whole summer planned out. She's going to take over the role of head baker from her abuela. She's going to move in with her best friend after graduation and live happily ever after with her boyfriend. But then the trifecta happens and all three crumble and fall apart. And her parents are worried about her mental health so they send her to England to spend the summer with some family. And while she's there, all she can really think about is moving back home and start baking again with all of the Cuban traditions and cuisine that she's grown up with. But she ends up bumping into Orion who works at this tea shop and he offers to be her tour guide and show her all England has to offer while she's stuck there for the summer. And yes, this book is absolutely as adorable as it sounds. That's like the one word I keep saying when I talk about this book, but it's absolutely true. I talked about this in my spring book recommendations and I still highly recommend it. I feel like this is going to be one of my comfort reads. There's so much like food and Cuban culture that's in this book and honestly it made me really hungry so if you're going to read it probably have some snacks on hand but I loved that element. I loved Leela and Orion. Separately, they were adorable and great characters, but I loved them together. Their friendship, their relationship, everything about the way they interacted was so good, and they're both dealing with things on their own, and it was nice to see them try to heal and to just try to make each other happy. It was so sweet, and it's just so cute. <laughs> After that, I switched over to a ton of fantasy books in a row, and the first one 
was Daughter of the Pirate King by Trisha Levenseller. And this is actually the first nautical book that I've read and I am obsessed. So this book follows Alosa, who is a pirate who purposely gets captured by enemy pirates so she can search their ship in hopes of finding clues to this ancient map for her father. And I am obsessed with Trisha Levenseller's writing. I had never read one of her books before until this one, and she has become one of my favorite authors. I read another one of her books this month too, which I will talk about in a second, but it's so good. I absolutely loved the setting. Like I said, it's my first nautical book, but I felt like I could picture everything. It was so cool, and Alosa is such a cool main character. She's so confident and self-assured, and I mean, how cool is it that she, like, purposely gets captured because she knows she can get free whenever she wants? Like, the confidence. Like, I wish I had even a little bit of her confidence. She is such a cool main character, and I absolutely loved it. And also, in the synopsis, it mentions that the only thing standing in her way is her captor, the unexpectedly clever and unfairly attractive first mate, Raiden. And I loved Raiden as well. He was such a fun character, and I loved their banter and the way they interacted together. It was so great, and I loved this so much. Not only did I give it five stars, but I ran out to the store to buy the sequel, like, right away, because I needed to know what was going to happen. So I'm actually hoping to read that one in May, so I will let you guys know how it goes. But this is so good, and I know it's kind of hyped up, but it definitely deserves the hype. These next four books are the books that I included in my TikTok Made Me Read It reading vlog, which I, I remember I will link below, but the first two were Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I'm sure you guys have heard about these, so I'm not going to give you the synopsis, but I am obsessed. I'm so glad I finally got my hands on these, and I'm kind of sad these are both library copies. I need to buy them immediately because I love them. I was more invested in the plot than I was expecting because I feel like when there's a heist or a quest or anything like that, I'm usually not too invested, but I actually really enjoyed the way it was written. And I am so glad that these characters were so amazing. I was really nervous because this book is told from so many different perspectives and the most I've read is like two or three perspectives before this. So I was a little nervous because I felt like if it jumped around too much, I wouldn't connect with the characters, but I actually think it added a lot to the story because you are able to connect to the characters individually before seeing them interact as a group. And it was so amazing. These characters are I can't even describe how much I care about them, and I fully understand why people are obsessed now. I love them so much, and at first it was just like Kaz and Inej that I really gravitated toward, but I loved that as the story went on, I started to love all of the other characters just as much, and now I don't know if I could even rank them because I just love them so much. <laughs> There's also so many plot twists, not only in Six of Crows, but also Crooked Kingdom. I don't think I've ever read books that have as many plot twists as these, and I like couldn't keep up. I feel like my jaw dropped so many times while reading. They are just so amazing, and I can't say enough good things. So right after reading Six of Crows, obviously I had to pick up Crooked Kingdom like the second I set Six of Crows down. <laughs> and in this book, I feel like we got to know the characters even deeper, which I genuinely appreciated. I cared about them so much. I feel like this book played with my emotions, <laughs> like it really did. And again, I was constantly impressed by all of the plot twists and also Kaz's intelligence because this man definitely was playing chess while everybody else was playing checkers. I feel like I hear that phrase a lot, but it is so true. Like, all these things were ha would happen and he would be like 12 steps ahead of everybody else. And I never understood how he knew, but it was just so clever. Like, and Lee Bardugo would genuinely walk you through the steps of how he figured it out and I still would be amazed. Like, I just love the wit and how clever he is. And that was such a fun element because I feel like usually I can figure out what's going to happen in books, but these books kept me on the edge of my seat. They're just amazing. And I gave them five stars. I would give them six stars if I could. Obsessed. The next book I picked up was The Shadows Between Us by Trisha Levenseller. And 
This one is one of the few fantasy standalones I've read. I feel like usually I don't read fantasy standalones, so I was so excited to get my hands on this one. And this follows Alessandra, who has a three-step plan. She's tired of being overlooked, so she's decided to woo the Shadow King, marry him, and then kill him and steal his powers and his kingdom for herself. And the cool thing is nobody really knows anything about the Shadow's shadow king's powers they just know that he constantly has these shadows swirling around him and so she finds a way into the castle i think it's a castle <laughs> and while she's there she realizes that there are a lot of assassination attempts against him and so she is trying to keep him alive long enough to carry out her plan as I said with Daughter of the Pirate King, I am absolutely obsessed with Trisha Levenseller's writing. It just sucks me in. I am so invested in the characters and the plot and honestly all of the details. I There's something about her writing that makes you want to read every single word. Sometimes I would reread sections because I just wanted to be able to picture the setting and it is just so well written and I loved both of these characters. I feel like they were very complex characters and I loved getting to know them and I really loved getting to know the Shadow King and especially learning about his powers. I am not sure what I expected his power to be, but I feel like it's so unique. I was so surprised. I didn't expect to love it as much as I did, but it's very cool. There's also a cool mystery element in here because they're trying to figure out who keeps trying to assassinate him. So I didn't expect that. And that's really cool. And ultimately it has a great romance. I was definitely shipping Callias and Alessandra, like hardcore shipping them. So I also looked up fan art for this the other day and it's very cool. So you guys should definitely check this one out as well. I feel like I don't hear too much about it other than when I'm on TikTok. So definitely read it if you haven't. And then the last fantasy I read this month was Crave by Tracy Wolf. And I was a little hesitant to pick this one up because the cover and the synopsis really reminded me of Twilight. And that's kind of a part of YA that I don't really revisit very often. It's like some of the books that really got me into YA and into reading a lot for fun. And it's been a while since I've kind of you know, dived back into that. So I was a little unsure of how I would feel, but Crave is about this girl that ends up going to a boarding school and there she meets Jackson, who is a vampire with some deadly secrets. And I really loved this. This book really caught me off guard. It's very nostalgic of those books like I was talking about. It definitely gives off some of those vibes. There's some parts that are like a little bit cringy, but it's done in a, such a way that it's, I don't know, it's so funny. I don't think I've ever laughed as much as how much I laughed during this book. But there's also so much action and I loved the romance in here. I feel like Jackson is such a good book boyfriend. I feel like because he's a vampire, you expect him to be like super like broody and all this stuff. And I guess he does have a little bit of that, but he's honestly very sweet. He did so many very sweet things for our main character. I think her name's Grace. Okay, yes, her name is Grace. And I don't know, he was just so sweet to her. I definitely rooted for them. Also, it was very cool because I feel like because of Twilight, I just expected there to be vampires and werewolves, but there's also like dragons and witches and gargoyles and like so many cool things. And I couldn't believe it. I've never read a book with dragons before. So I loved that. Also, there was a huge plot twist and cliffhanger at the end of this book. And it was honestly kind of rude because I did not have the other books in this series to keep reading. And I almost reread this whole book because I couldn't get my hands on the sequel for a while. But I finally like held myself off. And the other day I ended up caving and I bought the second and third book in the series. So I will probably read those in May because I'm obsessed and I need to know what happened to Jackson and Grace. I just want to see more of them, more of this world. I it's so good. Now I see why everybody wanted me to read this one and it's definitely great, definitely worth the hype. So after reading all of that fantasy, as you can imagine, I needed a little bit of a break and so the rest of the books I read this month were romance and contemporary. And the first one is The Friend Zone by Abby Jimenez, which is the first book 
in that series with the Happy Ever After playlist as I was talking about. So in this book, we have Kristen who is keeping this big secret and it's that she's facing this medical procedure that will make it so she's not able to have kids. And she's planning her best friend's wedding, but the only downside to that is that she keeps bumping into this guy named Josh and he is super funny and sweet and charming and she's really trying to stay away from him because the one thing she knows about him is that he wants a huge family and even though they are attracted to each other, she knows that's something that she can't give him. As you can probably imagine, this book is definitely emotional as well. This is actually the first book that ever made me cry like physical tears and I really did not expect it from this book. That's probably why it happened. It just completely caught me off guard. First of all, I loved the group of friends. So we have Kristen and Josh, but then the couple whose wedding is being planned, we also have the two of them and they are such a great group of friends and I really loved their dynamic together. But I also I also really loved Kristen and Josh. You could see so much chemistry. They, it was so sweet and it also had, you know, it also was sexy. It was like funny, sweet, adorable, sexy, everything you could ever want in like a rom-com. And it was also very emotional as you can imagine. Reading about somebody who is dealing with infertility was very hard to read about because even though I don't plan on having kids for a few years, I do want kids eventually and it was just very emotional to think about everything that she could be going through because she really does want kids and she will have to struggle a lot if she wants that to happen, especially because she really needs this medical procedure that could make it impossible. And it was just very, very emotional. <laughs> I ended up giving this book four stars and I definitely added Josh to my list of book boyfriends. After that, I read Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey, which is another rom-com that I ended up really loving. So our main character, Bethany, her family flips houses for a living and she does a lot of the furniture and decorating and all that kind of stuff. I don't really know what to call it. I feel like I'm missing the right word, but Basically, she has decided that she wants to try to flip a house by herself, but her brother doesn't take her seriously. And these TV producers get wind of this sibling rivalry happening. And so they decide to add it to an episode of Flip Off on kind of like an HGTV channel type vibe. And so Bethany is like, okay, fine. So she's trying to create her own crew, but there's only one person who decides to jump ship from her brother's crew, and that is Wes. And Wes is this like Texas cowboy who gets under Bethany's skin and she's kind of the last, he's kind of the last person she wants on her team, but they end up having to do this together and they're working in close quarters and there's a lot of banter and other things as you can imagine. <laughs> I actually loved this book way more than I was expecting. And I feel like there was a lot of great character development for Wes and Bethany, which is great because Wes honestly did say a couple things in the beginning that could come across as kind of sexist. And so even though I really liked them together, I wasn't sure how much I appreciated him as a character, but he went through a lot of development throughout this book and I really ended up appreciating them together. It was very sweet to see and one of my favorite characters in this was actually Laura who is this little girl that you will meet and she is the cutest. <laughs> I really enjoyed Tessa Bailey's writing. I feel like I've heard her name around for a while, but this is the first book I've picked up of hers, and it definitely makes me want to read the rest of the books in the series. I think this is the third book in a series of companion novels, so I will probably read the rest of those. And then I also looked in the beginning of this book, and there is a huge list of other books that she's written. So I definitely have been living under a rock because I haven't read any of these. So I will definitely pick up more Tessa Bailey books in the future. Oh, I also gave this one four stars. I don't know if I said that. Next, I read The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary and I was so excited to see this one at the library because this is one that has been on my radar for a very long time and this follows Tiffy who is looking for some place to live immediately because of a bad breakup and she answers an ad for a flat share with Leon who is a night shift nurse and 
So he will have the apartment during the day while Tiffy is at work and then Tiffy will have the apartment on nights and weekends. And because they live together, they end up leaving notes around to communicate about like what day is trash day and all that stuff that kind of starts out um, on a basic level. And then they start to tell each other some little tidbits about their friendships and work and their relationships and all of that stuff. So they end up learning a lot about each other through the notes, but also just by sharing a flat together. I'm honestly really sad because I ended up giving this book two stars and everything about the summary is right up my alley. It sounds absolutely perfect, but there's something about this book that it just didn't click with me. I found it pretty average and boring, which I feel terrible saying, but I did a lot of skimming while I read while I read this. I ended up just kind of skimming for the notes or any part of dialogue between the two of them because that was like the only part that I found kind of interesting. It was an enjoyable romance, but overall it was nothing special to me, so I probably will forget that I read this, which is sad, but I probably won't end up recommending this to anybody. I did really enjoy the notes and everything that was included. I thought that was a really cool element, but between that and the dialogue, that's really all I cared about. So I gave it two stars. After that, I read Some Girls Do by Jennifer Dugan, which was another arc that I read. And this one comes out May 18th. So stay tuned for that. But this is actually an LGBTQ plus romance. And on one hand, we have Morgan, who is openly gay. She's an elite track star. And she was actually forced to transfer schools during her senior year because her private Catholic school decided that her being gay is against their code of conduct. And then on the other hand, we have Ruby, whose hobbies include doing beauty pageants and living out her mom's dream and tinkering with her old classic car. So the two of them bump into each other on Morgan's first day of school, definitely get off on the wrong foot, but they are drawn to each other. And the one problem with their relationship is that Ruby is not ready to be openly gay. And so that's something that they have to work through if they plan to have a relationship. This was such a cute romance with a very strong focus on the struggles of people in the LGBTQ plus community. We kind of get two very different ends of the spectrum because we have Morgan who is very openly gay, loud and proud. She is determined to make sure that nobody ever feels the way she felt when she was forced to transfer schools. And so she's going through a lawsuit. She's joining clubs to help with like activism and helping support other people going through similar struggles. And then on the other hand, we have Ruby who is struggling with her sexual identity and just who she is as a person. She has grown up in a place where that's not really supported and so she's not really sure how she feels and she's not confident enough in her feelings to kind of stand up to those around her and be who she really is instead of who people want her to be and I really thought it was well written because as somebody who's not a part of the LGBTQ plus community myself, I really enjoyed seeing both of their perspectives. I feel like I learned a lot from them and it's very interesting to see how they also learned things from each other and helped each other through their separate. This was definitely a quick, easy read and I read it in one sitting. The cover is gorgeous and I feel like it gives me like spring summer vibes for some reason, even though you could definitely read it during any time of the year, but maybe it's just the cover. It gives me like spring or summer vibes because it has like a beautiful sunset, but I really enjoyed it. It's a great read. I gave this one four stars. Last but not least, I ended up reading Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall, and I actually haven't finished it yet, but I will finish it by the end of the day. And if you want to hear my full thoughts, I will end up doing a Goodreads review for this book. And this kind of gives me red, white, and royal blue vibes. I'm not sure why, but it kind of does. Although I think I'm enjoying this more than red, white, and royal blue. So that's kind of controversial, but that's how I feel right now. <laughs> but anyway, this book follows Luke, who is reluctantly famous. He has two rock star parents who had a very public breakup and his dad is now trying to make a comeback. So he is thrown into the spotlight again with his dad. And this photo ends up surfacing and it 
basically ruins everything that Luke has going for him. He's working at this nonprofit and all these donors start to pull out. And so he is told that he needs to find a boyfriend that will help tame his image. And that is where Oliver comes in because he is as nice and normal as they come. He is a vegetarian, he's a lawyer, he is super sweet and put together. So in other words, he is definitely boyfriend material. And the two of them strike this deal that whenever there is a chance for publicity or anything, the two of them will be fake boyfriends. But other than needing each other for different reasons in their lives and needing this fake relationship, they don't really have anything in common. So it's definitely kind of like an enemies to lovers, fake relationship type vibe. And it also takes place in England. So you also get that vibe as well. And it's so cute. I could see this becoming one of my comfort reads for sure. There's something so adorable and endearing about these characters and about their relationship. And even though it is a fake dating book, I feel like you can definitely tell that it probably won't stay a fake relationship. At least I'm hoping. I still have like 150 pages left. We will see. But as of now, their relationship feels very genuine. Even if it's just a friendship, I really love watching them interact together. It is so sweet and I just love it. I don't have my thoughts fully formed yet because I am still in the middle of it, but it's very sweet. And I don't think this one's talked about a lot. So if you loved Red, White, and Royal Blue, this gives me similar vibes. So I definitely recommend checking this out. Okay, so that is the end of my wrap up. Thanks for sticking around through all 17 of these books. I know it's a lot, but I would really appreciate it if you liked this video and also comment down below how many books you read this month and which one was your favorite. I would love to get some more book recommendations and please subscribe to my channel. I would really, really appreciate it. And if you do subscribe, click the notification bell so you know when I upload next. Thank you guys so much for watching. I can't wait to see you in my next video.